Good morning and a welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Saturday, June 25th. Our devotions are coming from Joanna Weaver's book called At the Feet of Jesus. And I give God the glory for all the things that he has done and that he is continuing to do. It is a day of celebration because the word of God tells us this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Our opening scripture comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 33. And our devotion reads, though we may be eager to do things for God, it's important to realize that ministry, like any kind of power or position, can be fancy food for the flesh. Our carnal nature can grow up around our call and even our careers like a wild vine choking out the sweetness of Jesus, leaving behind the foul stench of selfish ambition and vain deceit. Do I need to read that again? Our carnal nature can grow up around our call and even our careers like a wild vine choking out the sweetness of Jesus and leaving behind the foul stench of selfish ambition and vain deceit. And all the while Jesus is whispering, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. That's in Luke 9, 55. If we don't pause and listen to Christ's correction, God often allows us to run into a continuous string of mishaps and misunderstandings at church, at home, and on the job. We speak the truth in love only to have people misinterpret our words as judgmental our mis or mislabel our gift of administration as controlling or misconstrue our desire to help as meddling. Our families may even accuse us, unfairly of course, of loving everyone else except them. As we continue our wrong-spirited, carnal-minded efforts, we'll inevitably find that people neglect or refuse outright to follow the scripts we've so carefully prepared for them. They don't want to do what we want. They won't say what we need to hear. And we're left with hurt feelings and rejection. In fact, life may come to feel as though it's made up of one self-fulfilling prophecy after another. I knew they would leave me out. I knew they'd give that position to someone else. No one appreciates how hard I work. And with each hurt we experience, Satan just stands back and chuckles. Watching as we add yet another brick to the wall we're building around our hearts. Continuing to wonder why people don't treat us right, never realizing that the problems may lie within us. Now, I've experienced some of this stuff to the exact letter. And it's important because we can have a heart for the Lord and really firmly believe we are doing everything, but still lose our way. I've seen it happen. And it's not that people start out with bad intentions. It's not. I mean, and we have that's why we have to be humble and receive the Lord's correction. Sometimes he just wants to redirect us. Not, you know, he corrects those whom he loves. So it's important in everything that you surrender it to the Lord. That's why he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. When you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. And it doesn't matter how big your ministry is or how small it is. You can feel because you have giftings, like, for example, administratively. You can feel because you have that gifting and because you can you can think in a certain way and see the, all the steps in between that it has to be done exactly the way you've thought it out without considering the other people involved who may have something to contribute to that process. You see, God wants cooperation and unity as well, not a dictatorship where one person figures it out and then tells everybody what to do and gives them their assignments. It's not how it works. Okay. So there may be little things here and there that just need a little slight correction. And if we don't hear from the Holy Spirit, if we don't surrender in those moments where the opportunity to compromise or to see things from another perspective, 
uh, if we don't surrender to those moments, we're going to create a bigger problem down the line. And then, as this says here, I, I, I've experienced it myself. My time with the Lord was completely and totally neglected. And I had giftings inside me that weren't being developed. I had things inside me. I knew my heart was towards the Lord to do everything with full excellence, with integrity as unto the Lord. And yet there were still people rising up against me. And the Lord's shown me the little part that I played in that, the harvest that I reaped from that. But he also showed me me reaping a harvest from poor decisions I made or things that I did not surrender to the Lord does not mean that they are absolved of the harvest they are going to reap from the bad decisions that they themselves made. See what I'm saying? Just because you had some blame or some part in the harvest you're currently walking in doesn't mean that somebody who wronged you is now not guilty of wronging you because you had a little bit of blame in there too. See what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. But anyway, it's important. The bottom line is we must surrender every moment to the Lord for his decision, for his direction. That's why we need discernment. The word of God says in John, uh, my sheep hear my voice. So we hear him. And just to review what that's an illustration of for that period of time, there's a lot of shepherds and sheep. And at certain times of the year, all the herds would come in with the shepherds and all the sheep would get all mixed up in together. If you can just imagine a sea of sheep, how in the world are you ever going to be able to identify which ones are yours and which ones are someone else's? It's overwhelming. Well, shepherds had a certain call and all they had to do when it was time to go was to give out their call and all their sheep would go to the shepherd. They would separate themselves and go to the shepherd. That's the illustration. My sheep hear my voice and they follow. We need to hear the Lord's voice in every decision that's being made. We need to trust and hear him. And then no matter how difficult it might seem, no matter what expectations are being put on you, when you follow the Lord, you're going to be blessed. You will be blessed. Now, let's see. Our reflection scripture comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 20. Well, this is a few Let's see here. Numbers 20, verses 2 through 12, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Verses 2 through 12. Okay. There was no water for the people to drink at that place, so they rebelled against Moses and Aaron. The people blamed Moses and said, if only we had died in the Lord's presence with our brothers. Why have you brought the congregation of the Lord's people into this wilderness to die along with all our livestock? Why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here to this terrible place? This land has no grain, no figs, no grapes, no pomegranates and no water to drink. Moses and Aaron turned away from the people and went to the entrance of the tabernacle where they fell face down on the ground. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord said to Moses, you and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community. As the people watch, speak to the rock over there and it will pour out its water. You will provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community and their livestock. So Moses did as he was told. He took the staff from the place where it was kept before the Lord. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gather at the rock. Listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with the staff and water gushed out. So the entire community and their livestock drank their fill. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land I am giving them. God's instruction to Moses was to do what? Speak to the rock. And what did Moses do? He struck the rock. And is you're not going to see because you didn't trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel. You will not lead them into the land I'm giving them. That's the price 
I mean, I've kind of understand his frustration. I can totally feel it because he's like, wow, guys, really? God got you out of there and you're going to say we were better off slaves because we don't have water. Now, our reflection scripture is, though Moses was experiencing unfair opposition, what did God diagnose as his true problem? He didn't trust the Lord enough. Which is weird because but God knew his heart. He knew his heart. And if I think if there had may have been something different. It's important for us to trust the Lord, to trust the Lord, to not take matters into our own hands, to do our own version of what we think God is telling us to do. So it's slightly obedient, but we've added something to it. See what I'm saying? It's hard and it's difficult because we live in this natural world, but God wants to prove himself. You just have to trust him. And it seems like foolishness, but only the those who perish consider what's righteous to be foolish. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now for this word. And we want to surrender all the things within us to you. We want to trust you in greater measure. Help us, O oh God. Help our unbelief, O oh Lord. Have mercy, Father God, as you draw us closer to yourself. Father, help us to surrender to the corrections that you would give so that you could lead us down a path of better blessing and better prosperity, that the enemy not trick us or deceive us into not trusting you, that our own flesh, O oh God, would not resist the leading of your Holy Spirit. Give us clear ears to hear, Father God, and eyes to see what we need to see. And we give you all the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. If these devotions are uplifting, if they're blessing you, please consider liking and subscribing and clicking that notification bell. God bless you and bye until next time.